Remember when I was talking about the temperatures and IHS and uh, stuff when it comes to the thickness about uh, 7000 series Ryzen? I also mentioned there that Debauer was working on a delitting tool as well as a lapping tool so that we can take up to like 1.5 millimeters off of the thickness of the IHS, bringing it closer to the thickness of a standard Ryzen CPU prior to 7000 series. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to hopefully not destroy one of the 7950Xs, um, which ultimately I'm gonna end up deleting it anyway, but I wanna see if what lapping has to do for performance. Today's video is brought to you by the J2Sense merch store. We got t-shirts and gaming mats and mugs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go buy our stuff, we don't have to put other ads here and other annoying crap. So go buy our stuff. So I am uh, <clears throat> rerunning some baseline testing right now because it is significantly cooler in this room than the last time we did this video. The temperatures finally started to come down in SoCal, so I need to get new baselines. Um, interestingly enough though, I think it's funny how like one CCX only goes to 5.02. And the other one goes to 5.12. So 5.2 all cores is what we're allowed, but if we take a look at our temperatures here, a lot of this has to do with the fact that we're hitting 92C, right? And we're pulling 230 watts of the, the total that's allowed to us. And then we've got CPU powers at 190 watts. And so this is, this is why it's, it's one of the reasons why it's so hot, but I wanna change something here real quick. I wanna go ahead and turn on Precision Boost Overdrive. So, I, I mean, we're gonna hit 95C. We showed that in our review. Everyone has showed that 95C is where it goes. Uh, just to kind of a disclaimer here, I know a lot of people are not comfortable with it. AMD does say that is perfectly safe in everyday use scenarios, letting it go that hot. We obviously don't want to let it go that hot. So let's take a look at the, the, de, the I almost said delating tool. This is not the delating tool. I don't think that one's ready for uh, being sent to us yet. But this is the lapping tool, which is kind of nice. You've got these four corners here, which actually will screw down to hold the CPU. And then we've got these different, if you look at the side of them, the Bauer has marked them with like a Sharpie on top. That way, one, you can check for flatness because when you're lapping, it's gonna go down like that. I am gonna be using actually a belt sander type of um, tool to, to do the rough lapping and then smoothing it out with finer grit. But if you were to put too much pressure on one side or the other, then you would get a, un, a, a non-flat lap where if it's, if it's angled in some way, then your cooler is not gonna sit properly on there. So these like, these little steps, they look like little Mayan temples. Um, those are for checking flatness because they have steps to them. Then this side line right here, these ones in the middle that are flat, I'm assuming that is like, that's the lowest peak where we can go. I'm assuming uh, DeBauer didn't send any instructions with it. Um, but I, I, this is pretty much how I figured that it works. So let's go ahead and get this CPU in there right now. As you can see, 94C, it's never gonna exceed 95C because that's our limit. So what we're looking for now is whether or not um, anything is like, I guess, improving with these types of temperatures. Now, this is one of the things that I had asked him like, hey, is this something that, uh, you know, can, can, I initially had asked him if he could take his deleted CPU take an IHS off of Verizon and just like trim the sides and like just put it in between the CPU and uh, the, the cooler. And basically there's a bunch of reasons why that wouldn't work because it wouldn't have had pressure on the sides and wouldn't have expanded the heat across it. But basically that's why he said he came up with this tool. He said he's already got some results with it. I'm not gonna say what those results are yet. I'm gonna see whether or not my results even align with his. That way we can uh, see how practical this mod is. Now there's a couple things I might have to change regarding this. One, I will be changing the effective Z axis axis height. Because of the standoffs and screws that I'm using and the way that the AM4 cooler works, they, they bottom out. So I might actually have to actually replace these screws with M3 screws or whatever size it is that fits into the plate with just a long screw and a spring to hold it down because they may not, it may not come down far enough and give us proper tension. Okay, so if I, Put this in, jeez, Jay. It's, I mean, if it was a standard Ryzen, that would have been, uh, <laughs> that might have caused some damage right there. So I'm assuming it's more so the washer. Well, the washer is only a little bit bigger than the, the machine head. That's gonna be touching the CPU, so you won't cause any damage to the substrate. So make sure you use the washers. I have no idea if this is any sort of a final, like production type of deal that he's got going here, but this is what he sent me. All right, so if I take a look at this, looks at the IHS height is equal with the second notch on there. So as soon as I start lapping this, we're gonna go right through the top 
the very top portion of each of those little like steps because that's higher than the IHS. Two things, one, the guard broke, which really sucks. Um, two, and I'm not gonna wear gloves because I'm not gonna put anything on here that can get caught. But two, this is the point of no return. This is where you do this at your own risk because there is no warranty for your CPU after you do this. But if I just go ahead and like rub that, you can see I have already, see how the very top has started to wear off? So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for evenness. But you see how it hasn't touched the CPU? So, and I will be turning on the belt sander, but I just wanna see, Aha, now we're touching the CPU. This is really rough. This is 120 grit, and I'm just doing this to try and get down to the rough height we need to be at, and then I'll be using the finer grit to uh, you know, get this done, so. <laughs> if I let go, it's gonna launch, so I'm gonna do the best I can here. Look at that, we're already down to the copper. You see how I'm not putting even um, pressure on it because I can see now that it's copper there and not there. So I need to make sure I'm pushing in the center here. This makes short work of it, man. You can actually see by that shape that I'm not flat right now, but that's because I'm just getting it, the height down quicker with this. And then I'm going to a finer grit on glass where I'm gonna make it flat. So just keep that in mind. This is not precision. This is just to get some of the hard work out of the way. Okay, so I'm down to like one step on most except for one corner, so I'm not perfectly level yet. I'll be doing the rest of this on glass and a finer grit. Uh, I, took, I took a lot of material off and it gets very hot, not as hot as it would get in the system, but it gets hot all the way through the back. So this, fortunately I didn't send it flying across into our server, I guess now that I look at the way that, yep, yeah, right at our server, perfect, Jay. It's one way to upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna use the sandpaper that he sent with the package and a piece of um, plexiglass, or not plexi, uh, acrylic, no. Tempered glass? Tempered glass, and then we'll get the flatness back because I'll be able to more lightly apply pressure to it. <sighs> this is very warm. <sighs> but basically I just take a spare side panel from a case or something that we don't have all the parts for or don't use anymore, and I tape it down to the glass, and the glass is perfectly flat. And then this is actually actually wet dry. So I like to spray a little bit of distilled water on there uh, just so that we can keep the sandpaper from getting clogged. So this is the 400 now and I'm just gonna continue to the finer and finer grit. This is to remove scratches. Uh, you do not want to leave a lot of rough scratches in there. Remember, IHS uh, contact with the cooler you have to use thermal paste to fill in all the microscopic peaks and valleys, that way you have full contact of all the metal. The deeper the scratches, the worse the efficiency is gonna be between the heat transfer of the IHS to the cooler. So this is gonna be one of those things where if you just put in there, you know, quarter millimeter deep scratches, you're, you're only hurting the efficiency of heat transfer. So it's important to continue to be patient and just go through the steps to start removing those scratches and work up to a finer and finer um, and sometimes you'll still see scratches, but not feel them with your fingernail. If, the, if you can feel the scratch with your fingernail, it is still way too deep. And we're talking microscopic scratches here. So you have to make sure that you just take the time to do it right. Think of it as like a paint job or a polishing job on metal. You just, you get that shine because it's perfectly flat. And that's what we're looking for. Circular motions, back and forth motions. Keep checking it to see if you're seeing any sort of a pattern of form because of the high, high spots and low spots and unevenness. That's why I keep drying it off to make sure that uh, I can see the pattern. And we'll just come back when it's done because I need to make sure I don't take off too much because if then if it goes down below the bracket holding the CPU down, then it's just gonna hit the bracket. So there's only so much you can take off before your cooler can no longer touch the CPU because the retention system for the, the CPU is higher than the IHS. Okay, so this is what I'm left with, and we're only down to 2,500. You can see scratches, but you can't feel them. In fact, if you look at it at like a diagonal angle, it's, uh, it's pretty shiny. So, and there's no polish. Don't polish. I know any automotive guy, when it comes to sanding metal, is gonna wanna throw some polish on there to make it like a mirror. Don't do that. Polish can actually insulate. You don't want polish between your thermal paste, your IHS, and your cooler. Um, you'll also notice, too, there's one corner on here that's a low spot. Um, that's when I got a little bit excited with the belt sander and pushed down too far on that corner. That's still very rough. Fortunately, where that is, 
It's not gonna, in my opinion, I don't think, affect cooling in a negative way. Ultimately, this is gonna end up being deolated. So if that, ends up, if that ended up causing a problem, which I really don't think it did, um, that's coming off no matter what. So I, you need to make sure though, that you get all of the residue out because of the fact that it is filled with copper bits and IHS bits. So what I'm gonna do after I screw these screws back in, because I could technically use this again, I just won't have the guides. Oh, and by the way, I didn't go as low as it would let me. I went to the last step on the little like staircase markers because I'm afraid of going too far accidentally and then ending up going uh, to where the IHS won't stick up above the, the retention bracket. So just wanted to point that out. If I wanted to truly measure improvements here, what I would have had to have done is I would have had to have just, just lapped it smooth without taking material off, just like I normally would. But that way we could see if just smoothness or flatness of the IHS helps. I almost always lapped 12th gen and 10th gen because of the fact that we found that uh, Intel IHS is almost always concaved or almost always domed. And the problem is there's a lot of information out there about the fact that like, hey, they do that on purpose because coolers are concaved or domed or et cetera, et cetera. Um, the thing is I can't account for which ones are which. So important to point that out. So a little thermal paste on there, but as you, as you can see, I've got all of the residue and stuff off of the, uh, the capacitors because I ended up using 91% isopropyl alcohol and a brush to get down in there. And then using the blower with a lot of alcohol saturated in there to dry it out. Cause any, any moisture that got under the IHS, cause I'm not sure if it's sealed all the way around, although I think it is. I don't want it in there cause there's obviously a lot more happening in there that's conductive. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. See how the screws, they bought them out. So depending on, and I think I have a little bit of, of wiggle room though, honestly, and I don't, may not need to change these because I know when I tighten it down, I've noticed that my bracket bends because there's no springs in this setup, as you can see. So I don't think I'm gonna have to necessarily loosen or change the screws out and go springs, but I'd much rather have it be um, solid mounted than springs. Because here's the thing, it's gonna bottom out on the screws. I could feel it bottoming out on the screws. So I need to see now, power it up, do a, do a temperature run, see what happens for the, uh, the temps on there. I don't know why it feels slower at the moment though. Hard to explain. Oh yeah, look at the temp, 96. That's why it's slower. It is not touching the CPU. It is burning to death right now, just being on. 200 megahertz, 100, okay. Let's shut it down. So we now know why the IHS is so thick. It's because it has to account for the standoff height to be compatible with older coolers, which is exactly what we thought. This isn't that big of a deal. It's just, if you're gonna go this route, exactly like what DeBauer is having to come up with for direct die cooling. Um, it's not even shutting off because it's like running so hot. So I'm just gonna let this cool down for a sec. If you're gonna go direct die cooling, obviously he has a new, new retention system that he, you have to come up with. And if you're gonna lap the CPU, um, same thing applies. Now I can tell you it uh, was not bottoming out on the bracket. I could feel it hitting the screws. I didn't plug in the pump. Novel concept, huh? What an idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny how much snappier it is when it's not being throttled down to 100 megahertz. <laughs> the sad part is my comment I made to Phil was that when it was throttling, it just felt like I was on an Intel system. <laughs> I have not tried 13th gen yet at the time of filming this, so I don't know what the, what the future brings. 86, 93, 94 and throttling. I don't think we're touching. See how fast it went to 95? Yeah, so I think we are touching enough. And like it's still running five gigs on one, 5.07 down to four, five on the other. It can still do five gigs all core running hot. Yeah, okay. So we do, we will need, and then how fast does it come down? 39 instantly, yeah. It, it absolutely needs custom hardware to hold that down. All right. I don't think that was making very good contact. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was making very good contact at all, honestly. It's squished out a little bit, but yeah. I honestly believe it's the screws, so. Hard part about this, oh, it's, is it bending? No, it's fine. Is getting it flat, like even tension on each side. Should put washers on those. One concern about doing it this way though is too much pressure on the socket can cause it to bow, which could make pins not touch. 
So this is something I dealt with a lot with the XOC stuff. We are definitely, for me in this particular platform, in uncharted territory in terms of what it can and can't deal with in terms of pressure. That's why I use the springs, they're not bottomed out. But this CPU will now never work in a regular motherboard system again. At least with that retention system. Um, the hook type, maybe. But if you have screws that like bottom out and stop the cooler from going down any lower, then no, that, that, this CPU is now forever gonna have to be in a delitted rig, cause that's where it's, that wasn't a fart. Yeah, I think we're still running into a slight mount issue. Look at this, we're still down. Oh man, this is one of those times when like, yeah, there's 95. I think we're having a, a mixed bag here of getting it flat, mounted flat, and not hitting the bracket. So yeah, it's exactly what we thought. These markers on the side right here, that's the lowest point you can go. I have not gone that deep, so that tells me I'm still dealing with a mount problem here. That's the maximum removal of 1.2 millimeters of thickness off of the IHS. Each one of those steps, these little stairs I showed you, each one of those is 0.4 millimeters. So I've taken off, because I'm down to the last step, I have taken off approximately uh, 0.8 millimeters. I have not gone as far as I could go. All right, I need to investigate this. We're just gonna pull some video magic here and come back with whatever I think is going on. So I just had this idea, why don't I take off the stoppers, these guys, and test it because the threads are longer than that stopper. So what I'll do right here is I'll have, see if I can feel get a perfect angle of this, but if you look right here, it may not be easy to see on camera, but this is actually a couple millimeters lower than this guy now. This is fully seated, this is fully seated. So just by popping off the round part at the bottom, I can reuse the original hardware, which is kind of what I want now. Cause then it can just stop on each one of these standoffs here and then I'll have even tension. All right, come on, give me some results here. 80, 85. <gasps> That's already an improvement. <laughs> it's actually working and I, I could go more if I wanted. Now, one of the things that he talked about in his video is that he has his own thermal paste that he was using on there, which could account for one, maybe two C. He did send that, but I didn't use it because I wanted to just use this setup. But look at this, we're 5.14, 5.069. So they're actually slightly higher. This is like 30 megahertz higher on each one because we're not getting the full 5.2 because look, we're hitting the PPT limit here. So now if I were to go to PBO and, and enable that limit to go up, we might actually hit the 5.2 all core. But check this out, what's my score? It's 27 or 37,933. Remember I said that first run when it was actually colder than it is right now in this room was a 38,050. So we're within that margin of error now. Is there any sort of improvement in performance? At the moment, no, because we haven't changed, clocks haven't changed, but temperatures are down. It's still not exciting. It's not, it's not like, hey, everyone should go void their warranty for 5C because we were at 94, remember? So we came down to 88, 89, which is better. Ar arguably it's better. I said earlier in this video that he told me what his results were. He did say up to 6C, and that's probably with using his thermal paste. He sent it, but I had to use the same stuff I used before, which is MX4, which is not the greatest stuff, but it's the cryo not extreme. You know what I could do right now is I could just repaste this with extreme and see if this helps at all. And it's important to remember, I didn't even take off a full millimeter. Let's get the Cryonaut Extreme on there to compare and let's wrap this baby up. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad now that I just know that the issue before was the fact that it's very difficult to get a proper mount without something stopping your, your limits. You know what I mean? Or giving you limits so that you don't go too far in one direction. Not the band, no one should listen to them. It's idling at 31. It can't be that much better, hold on. Wow, <laughs> we just dropped five more degrees. Either I really screwed up the mount again, or Cry Not Extreme is actually, it's, it's okay, 3C, 5C. Anywhere between three to five C improvement. That was just one run, but let's see. What's our score? 37,946. All right, we're trying to five, four, all core. Let's see. There we 
There it goes. Hey, we're still under 90. 5-4 on all cores. There's 90. Maybe I'll just try 55-50 because we knew that wouldn't work. And if it does, then we'll know that that slight temperature improvement obviously scaled down to uh, stability improvement. And then when I go direct die cooling, it'll just be absolutely no brainer. Okay, here we go, 55-50. Will it blend? That's not blender, but actually that should be the joke if it's blender. Aw, oh, see there it goes, yeah. Gotta get it colder for 55-50 to work. Okay, final recommendation. Should you lap it? I don't, I don't feel like the, I don't feel like the temperature gain, or I should say reduction, is worth the destruction of your warranty. But if you're the kind of person that would already lap your CPU, then probably. I mean, it's gonna be whatever the cost of his tool is, which is at this moment made out of nylon. I don't know if it's gonna be made, well, it can't be made out of metal. <laughs> That'd be really hard to lap through. It is a one-time use deal. And you know what? If I had gone, let's put it this way. If I drop, if I drop four to five C at 0.8 millimeters, I guess I could say if I did the next, 0.4 millimeters, or what is it, 0.2 mil, yeah, it's 0.4 millimeters per level, I would have gained another two and a half C worth of temperature reduction, if it's linear like that. I don't think it is, but um, the temperatures did improve, which is kind of awesome to see. So the next time you see me doing anything custom with this exact CPU, uh, which I now have to use with that hardware, if I'm gonna use that cooler, it will be uh, delitted. And I'm looking forward to the D-Lid mod because remember my 10, my 9980XE was D-Lidded, so. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something here today. If you're a tinkerer and you have the tools to lap it straight and smooth and you're not afraid of it, then uh, by all means, go for it. If you're the kind of person that's like, I need my warranty, don't even consider it. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.